Hello ladies and gentlemen on YouTube, my name is Brad, this is my channel Animate Orange where I put together metal model, 3D metal models, specifically a lot of metal earth. Today I bring you something that's long overdue, the cat mining truck. I haven't gotten into any of the cat models yet, I've wanted to, things happen, but here I finally got the really giant oversized dump truck, mining truck, to put together. Is this two sheets, three sheets? I'm not sure. Let's open it up, see what's inside, and build us some construction equipment. Cat mining truck. This will be my first cat build. This is nice and heavy. Oh look, it's splitting open at the bottom. Well, never mind that. Inside we have a nice little wad of Sheet metal, sheet metal, and sheet metal. So, three sheets. Not unexpected. Slide these over out of the way for the moment. And took a look. You have two pieces of paper for the directions. Also, not unexpected. And if we open this up all the way. <coughs> Desk is getting a little crowded here. Page one, we have the cat logo, Metal Earth 3D Metal Model Kids, line drawing of the truck and one of the sheets, mining truck and the item number, QR code to scan to be to use your phone. You scan that, you get like a 360 view, it takes you to the website, or you can just go to the website on a computer. And then down here we have the usual little diagram with one of the parts showing you the insertion tabs, fold lines, and insertion holes, and a very brief description of what those are. You know those pliers are helpful for assembly. We have the legend. When you see the darkened E pointing at a part, it's pointing at the engraved side of that part. The NE points at the non-engraved. Now Sometimes a non-engraved site will appear to have engraving on it, but it's usually engraving that is meant to make it easier to round or fold and not detail that's supposed to show. And that can get a little confusing sometimes. And the attention point, this is just pointing at something. Pay attention to how these line up or this tab or this particular spot or don't forget that. It varies depending on the situation. And over here, what I used to always refer to the as the legend before this started showing up. The blue circle, when you see that at a connection point, it means to insert the tab and fold it over 90 degrees. The green triangle, insert the tab, twist it 90 degrees, pull and screw metal tab 90 degrees to tighten. Not a bad tip. And then down here we have two of the three sheets. And I'm just gonna grab one, this one, it shows you all the different parts and the part numbers point to the part so you can find that part on the sheet to know which part to get for the assembly section that you're at. And you have some things here like all of these tire tracks are all colored blue. So they're, they're the same part. There's just one part number, they're identical, and they're used in multiple places seeing as how this, their tires on a truck, that's understandable. I have some blue over here, slightly different shade of blue. Those two pieces are the same. These two pieces will be the same, so on and so forth. You slide over to page two. We have the third sheet with more parts for the wheels. Green, 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 green. Purple, purple. Purple, purple, purple. Pur pur. That didn't come out right. Anyway, moving on. Below that, we have the assembly flow chart with part one showing you the engraved signs. Part two. It's kind of showing you how to fold this. And part three attaches to part two. I guess this attaches somehow. I think this, okay, this is part two here. All right, this looked at first like it was just a line. So these sides fold over on part two and part one attaches to it. And then part three attaches to that. And this looks like the side of, of the, the dump part of the truck. And you go on part four, five, three again. So there's two part threes. Just follow the arrows, adding on parts, paying attention to the sub-assemblies. When you get to the bottom, flip over to page three and continue on. 
assembling the parts and putting the model together. Then on to page four. Continue following the arrows. Sometimes they curve around different ways. And this is like a sub-assembly. You put this together and that goes here. And that will pop up from time to time. So it can get a little confusing. Just take your time, pay attention. It'll work itself out. Follow on through. You get to the bottom of this first sheet. And that's where the second sheet comes in. Of course, picking up at page 5, which is on the inside here. Continue on. And page 6. On the back, page 7. Page 8. When you get to the bottom, you've completed your model. Let's take a moment to talk about the tools that I use. This is my standard set that I use in most every build. I have long needle nose pliers and flat nose pliers useful for a variety of different things. I have flush clippers that I use to cut the parts off the trees. It makes it quick and easy. And then I have some precision tweezers, one with a very pointed end, one that's had the pointed end ground down slightly, and one with a flat sort of curved end great for getting into curved areas. And then I have a standard set of tweezers with an angled tip. These come in one of the Iconics models and I love them and use them a lot. When it comes to shape and rounded parts, there are many options. I used dowel rods for a long time. I sharpened the ends of two of them with a pencil sharpener. These two are great for making cone shapes. Another option is a cheap drill bit set. The set has quite a few different sizes to choose from. Another option is a set of step mandrels. Another option for rounding parts, especially larger parts, is sockets. Maybe you have some sitting around already, maybe you know someone that will loan you a few, or maybe just pick up a really cheap set. Ring pliers or round nose pliers can be found with jewelry making tools and work wonderfully for curving delicate and or hard to get to areas. I have a sculpting set here that I occasionally use, and they have all kinds of different shaped ends on them. Some flat, some angled, some spoon, there's a couple of hooks. They're useful for reaching in and bending and pushing and pulling tabs and shaping parts from the inside. We've peeked at the directions, got our metal sheets, we've talked about some tools that uh, will be useful. Now I've got a basic set to get me started. Let's build us a mining truck. already bending something backwards.
Be sure to bend these tabs over. At the end of the build, there will be panels covering these areas.
The wheels may look complex, but take it one step at a time. It's not that bad.
Part 32 is held on by one tab. I'm not really fond of parts that are held on with but one tab. They tend to be not at all secure. After a couple of attempts to make this part stay because it kept falling off, I decided to try a little Loctite. I had a lot of trouble getting the front part connected, partially because of that ladder on one side and in part because things just did not quite fit. I had to bend some of the metal underneath the platform to open up enough room.
I missed a couple of steps after taking a break, but it's not anything tough to work out. When I first put these two sections together, I did it correctly. When I had to give it a second try, I accidentally put one side on upside down. This piece is listed on the instructions as part 56. Part 56 is actually a different part and used on the previous page. The part is actually 54. There are two part 54s, and you've already used one once. Here you will find another tight fit where parts do not seem to want to fit together. I bent a few flaps the wrong way.
Part 78 went together crooked, but after securing the tabs, a little twist with the tweezers straightened it right up. Now adding part 78 and 77 onto the frame was a frustrating pain. I twisted the first tab a little to hold it in place while I lined up and bent over the rest of the tabs holding the dump bed on. It is important that you bend these tabs over flat. And I present the mining truck, a rather large dump truck. If you don't actually know what size these are in real life, you should look it up because this 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 need to be this place right here is the cab. This thing is huge. It doesn't drive on the road. 
I think they actually have to ship them in to where they're used in pieces and put them together. But this, I had to put together and it wasn't terribly difficult. It is a little bit of a challenge. It took me a little over four hours to complete this build and most of it was fairly straightforward. There are some challenging parts, especially getting the staircase and the upper platform together. Some things don't quite fit right and take a little modification as you may have seen, but really all in all it wasn't that highly challenging of a model. Just some difficult parts and a lot of little parts to piece together so it took a lot of time. There's a lot of time it just it took finding and clipping out the parts because three sheets worth of stuff scattered all around and so many little parts that is part of the issue of it taking four hours to build. But I love it and it actually the wheels are fairly straight on it which I tend to have a problem with with when I build things with wheels on them. So this looks great. I'm really, really pleased with how this turned out and how it looks. It's, it's come together quite well. Now I need to start putting together some of the other cat models. I'll leave it at that. If you have any questions or comments, as always, leave them down below. Thank you for watching and keep on keeping on.